And so I think there's just, there's so many issues with the way diets are designed and they end up making people feel like we are the failure when it's really the diet that's just not set up in a way that is designed to work. So they just tend to be too restrictive, they're complicated to follow, and so people don't want to stick with them. And they also, I just think, breed a lot of negativity. I mean, most of my clients, because they failed at so many diets when they come to me, they're leery to try you know, my program because they feel like they're a failure. Nothing has worked for them. And so there's just all this negative self-talk that comes, I think, from the whole diet culture. Um, and just that lack of belief in yourself and, and feeling guilt and shame around eating. Hello, this is Marco Rock. Hi, I'm Marco Leroy. I'm the host for Inside a Great Mind, where we interview entrepreneurs, achievers, game changers for a purpose to inform and inspire you. Today on the show, we saw three for our guest, Christina Johnson. How are you? I'm good. How good are to you? have you on the, fo- on the show. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. So tell us who is Christina Johnson? Uh, well, I'm a transformational nutrition coach. I um, have been doing this for about three years now. Okay. And I really got into what I'm doing. I used to be a teacher, so I went to college, I got my teaching degree, I did that for probably about five years. And then I got my master's in counseling, worked as a school counselor. But, you know, as much as I loved being in the education system, I remember being in kindergarten and thinking that I wanted to be a teacher when I grew yeah. up. Everybody said, other kids say that. <laughs> yeah, it is a pretty common thing. And I did love it, but it just felt like something was missing. It wasn't quite what I felt like I was being called to do. And so eventually that's how I ended up um, becoming a health coach. And Interesting. Yeah. What is the purpose? What drives you yeah. to get to this business? That is a great question. And it's interesting. I've been thinking about this recently. I feel like it's changed over the years. Initially, I think it was more self-focused. I wanted to have a job and a career where I felt like I had purpose and meaning and like getting job satisfaction from yes. it. I loved the idea of having, you know, building my own business and creating something and um, and having that flexible schedule. But over the years, it's definitely shifted a lot more the more people that I work with. And I mean, even just recently, I was on a group coaching call and I saw all these women that were so excited to get on and tell me that, you know, one woman is 60 years old and she feels like she can bounce out of bed again. She doesn't feel like it, she has to feel like she's 60 anymore. And so the more stories I hear like that, the more my purpose has become to let other people know that you don't have to, to suffer, you don't have to feel horrible every day, but, but you can do something about it. And ultimately what I love most is helping them feel healthier and feel more confident so that they can achieve their purpose. Because I think sometimes when we don't feel good, when we um, feel like we're not comfortable in our bodies, we're worried about our weight, it stops us from doing so many of those things in life that we really want to be doing. Mm-hmm. What type of client do you work with? Can you give me the profile of your clients who yeah. you work yeah, with? Yeah, I would love to. So I work with any, I've worked with people from 20 all the way up to 60 plus. Most of my clients are women who are in their 50s and 60s and they have struggled for most of their adult life and sometimes even since childhood with eating healthy. They've gone on all these different diets. They. Um, you just don't have a good relationship with food or with themselves and they are at a point where they are done with dieting. They know that it's not working and so they really want to just create this healthy lifestyle and have a better relationship with food and be able to age well and mm-hmm. you know be around to see their grandkids grow exactly. up and be active. What are the common mistakes you see uh, the average people make uh, mm-hmm. when they're trying to lose weight or become healthier? Yeah, I believe that the number one mistake people are making is going on diets. And I know really? 
I know, it's kind of counterintuitive. Everybody's going to die. Yes. So why, why is it a mistake? I want to know more. Yeah. Well, so part of the fact is that, I mean, the research shows us 95% of diets don't work. They don't help us lose weight and keep it off. Or, you know, even if people lose weight, they just don't stick with those healthy habits long term. Mm. And so I think there's just, there's so many issues with the way diets are designed. And they end up making people feel like we are the failure when it's really the diet that's just not set up in a way that is designed to work. So they just tend to be too restrictive, they're complicated to follow, and so people don't want to stick with them. And they also, I just think, breed a lot of negativity. I mean, most of my clients, because they've failed at so many diets when they come to me, they're leery to try you know, my program because they feel like they're a failure. Nothing has worked for them. And so there's just all this negative self-talk that comes, I think, from the whole diet culture. Um, and just that lack of belief in yourself and, and feeling guilt and shame around eating. What can I go tell my friends who want to become healthier then? What are the other alternatives to diet? Yeah. If, you, if you tell me today that diet <laughs> is not the, uh, the best approach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not the answer. So what I have seen in my experience that works for people is to forget the whole diet mentality and really focus on creating a healthy lifestyle on creating this lifestyle that, that they feel confident that they could actually continue long term, that doesn't feel extremely restrictive or um, like based on deprivation, but just feels like it can become their everyday normal. And so what I find, I know that kind of sounds a little vague, what I find for most people that it takes is first, instead of counting calories and cutting portion sizes, really focusing on what they're eating. So eating, I call it just clean eating. Okay. So eating less processed food, eating less sugar, and eating more food that you could go outside and find in nature, you know, things in a garden or on a farm. And so just eating more of those real foods and reducing the processed food is step one. And then really learning how to create balanced meals. I think there's so many people that, eat, that especially for breakfast, are eating all these carbs, like eating oatmeal and cereal and granola bars, and they're not getting the protein and the fat and the fiber that we need. What do you say you should not be eating oatmeal in the morning? Because I'm one of them. I, I, <laughs> yes. I love oatmeal. You know, okay, so I will tell you, I had oatmeal for this morning for breakfast, okay. but I added some collagen to it for some protein, some hemp seeds, so I have a little bit of extra fat, fats in it. So, I, yeah, I don't think oatmeal itself is bad, and I don't think carbs in general are bad. I just think that over the last probably few decades, ever since the whole low-fat diet craze, that everybody has focused on cutting back fat and we have like tripled our consumption of carbs. So it's more just about, and especially, so like at breakfast, having protein with your breakfast and having fat, because what happens is when we have especially processed carbs, it, it spikes our blood sugar and then our blood sugar plummets and then all day long we're on this blood sugar roller coaster where we're craving sugar or we're having energy crashes or feeling anxious or irritable. So, yes. Interesting. Yeah. Can you please tell me what would be the ideal plan meal for like a day and sure. what time you should be eating? Is that good to skip like lunch or just eat like a healthy breakfast yes. and skip lunch and and all those details? Sometimes people say don't eat late at night mm -hmm. or don't eat something heavy. How does all this stuff apply? Yes, that's an excellent question. I will preface it by saying that my approach, you know, people ask me, do you follow a paleo diet, keto, vegetarian? And I really believe there's not one way of eating or one plan that's perfect for everyone. We're all unique, our bodies are different, men and women have different things that work, you know, like intermittent fasting, for example, where you eat in a shorter amount of time works really well for men and for some women, but for some women it doesn't work well with. So the approach that I, I recommend people start with is eating three meals a day and then you can tweak it. So have your breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Make sure that each of those meals has protein, fat, and ideally vegetables. So for example, for breakfast it might be eggs and even you know a little bit of bacon every now and then, a good quality one. Or and for lunch, having just some kind of protein, whether it's a salad with, with meat and some good quality olive oil and vinegar over a big bed of lettuce. Uh, you know, it's a lot of meat, vegetables, good fats, and, and as for timing, I would say, again, that depends. I, I think the ideal is to wait longer between our meals because what happens then, if we're eating constantly, 
that you know we eat breakfast and then our body uses that for energy and then we eat again and we use that for energy and we never get a chance to burn any stored body fat so if we can wait longer it gives our digestive system a break it's you're more likely to burn fat and and your brain usually you have better focus and mental clarity when you're waiting longer between meals what about somebody like me who doesn't eat heavy but kind of snack throughout the day yeah what can you tell them? you know I I guess if you were my coaching client I would ask you how you're feeling and if that's working for you if you feel like you have good energy throughout the day if you feel like you have good focus and clarity and are feeling good then great it sounds like it's working for you if however there's something that you feel like mentally or physically could be improved then I would suggest shifting that a little bit mm -hmm. so maybe having a little bit more for breakfast and seeing if you can wait longer to eat. So it kind of comes down to your goals and, and how happy you are with how you're feeling. Well, I know you don't uh, agree with the diet. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this. Mindset, diet, exercise, which one important to live healthier? Oh, that is a great question. Honestly, probably mindset is the most important. I think that one of the reasons why diets don't work for people is because they say, okay, here's what you need to eat, now go do it. And we all know what to eat. I mean, the tips I give my clients, it's not like breaking news by any means. <laughs> breaking news. Yeah, I mean, eat vegetables and drink water. But the problem is that we're just not doing it. That's what everyone tells me. I know what to do, but I'm just not doing it. And so I think one of the, the key pieces that I work on with my clients is really figuring out what is driving your eating behaviors. Because if we only ate when we were physically hungry, when our body needed food for energy, then there wouldn't be an issue with weight. There wouldn't be an issue with you know eating too much junk food and not feeling good. But the issue is that there's all these other times that we're eating. We're eating because it just sounds good or because we're stressed or because you know we th have the thought, I've had a hard day, so I deserve you know, a treat. So I would say that probably mindset is, is the biggest component to having lasting success. Now we're gonna focus, shift the conversation on you. Sure. If you were to be an animal, <laughs> what animal would you be? <laughs> oh, my husband would love this question because he's always wanting pets and I'm not an animal person okay. at all. So uh, maybe an owl, I would an say. Owl. Just because when I think of an owl, I think of learning and wisdom and I, like by nature, I just, I love to learn and I said it's something that motivates me a lot. If you have the power to make one positive change in the world, what, what, what would you change? Mm. I think helping people believe in themselves, just that they can accomplish whatever it is that they want to. I think that we all have gifts and talents and skills that we have to offer the world and we let our self-doubt and our fear of failure hold us back and so if I could just instill that belief in everyone that that they can accomplish what they want, I think the world would be a much different place. Who inspires you? I think growing up, and it's probably a little cliche, but Oprah always inspired me just because she, she just really built this empire and has such a heart to help and serve other people and um, just has this ability to connect with people. And I think that, that that's what life is all about, connecting with people, inspiring people, and encouraging them. What would be your last advice tip to my audience? I would say that if you are really wanting to to improve your health, to feel better, to um, just make a difference in how you're feeling every single day, the best thing to do is to start with a clean eating approach. So just start drinking water and having more vegetables and like we talked about having protein, fat and fiber. When you make those simple changes, it's amazing how much better you start feeling. And I think that can be like a domino that sets off changes in so many different areas of your life. I think taking care of our health is such a key piece to just our overall life and happiness and, and self-confidence. How can people find more information about you? Sure, I have a website, christinajohnsonwellness.com. I have a free five-day weight loss challenge where we focus more on some of the mindset pieces of weight loss, so you're welcome to check that out. And then I also have a Facebook page, Christina Johnson Wellness. Christina, thank you so much for being on the show. Yes, thanks for having me. Appreciate it.